Well, hi everyone, and welcome once again to my video blog. Um, so today I'm going to talk about depression, which is something that affects a pretty high percentage of the population. As much as, you know, 25% of people will experience depression at some point in their life. And I think it affects transsexuals, you know, perhaps even more than the rest of the population. So I think it's a very relevant subject to this blog. Um, so to begin, you know, why does depression happen to transsexuals? You know, well, being transsexual is, is pretty tough, you know, I mean, even before you transition. You know, most transsexuals will talk about a feeling of unhappiness, you know, about living in the wrong body and feeling like you're living a lie, like nobody really knows you, you know. And I've gone through that myself, you know, I mean, living my childhood and most of my teenage years, you know, feeling like, you know, people don't really like me, but they don't even know the real me, you know, the person that they see, the person they interact with, you know, is the personality that I am forced to present to the rest of the world in order to, you know, avoid being rejected completely. You know, you're forced to act male or to act female, even though you don't, you don't feel like you should have to and you know that that's that's pretty hard to do it's pretty hard to pull that off all the time you know every day of your life you know to never never feel like you're truly living your life i think it leads to a feeling a feeling of unfulfillment in the end you know which is rather unpleasant and if you can actually, you know, get to begin your transition, you know, it's it's a very difficult process. You know, it's it's quite expensive in terms of time and money. I myself have already spent, you know, probably easily over like twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars, perhaps even more than that, you know, on my transition. If you count all the new clothes, all the medication, all the permanent hair removal sessions. Uh, you know, all, all the things that I've had to buy and my plastic surgery on my face, you know, my facial feminization and all that. And now I'm planning to have, you know, breast implants put in and that's going to be, you know, another $10,000 that I'm going to have to spend on this. And it takes a lot of time, you know, it takes a lot of time planning and learning and, and doing all these things. You know, so it takes a lot of resources. It's a really huge effort, and it also takes a, a lot of courage from you. You know, it, it requires you to constantly, you know, defy the norms of society in a sense. You know, and you know, always do these things for you, for yourself, because you want to be happier in the end. You know, but it's not easy because a lot of people are going to be disapproving along the way, even if they don't tell you. Um, and of course, transition can also take a very long time. My transition, I started it, you know, a couple of years ago already, like when I was 21, 22, and I'm almost 25 now. So it's already taken several years. And, you know, I don't think I'm completely done, even though I am. I am mostly done at this point. And of course, you know, transition can have a heavy cost, not only in terms of times and money, but also because there's a risk associated with it. You can lose your friends, in some cases your family can reject you, uh, people that don't even really know you can reject you, you know, you can be discriminated against, you can end up losing your job, you could end up being forced to move out of your, your little town if you live in a small town, you know, your neighbors could could be assholes and decide, you know, to, uh, to let you know that they don't approve of what you're doing, and all of those things can make your life very difficult make you feel very alone. And of course transition is extremely scary, you know? I mean, you start transition and you really hope that you're going to be happier when you're done. You know, when you get to the other end, when you're finally you. You hope that you're going to be happier, but you have no real guarantees about that. You don't know the future. You, you can't really see what's going to happen. You know, and sometimes it just seems like, you know, transition takes so long and is so difficult to begin with, you know. Like, you're really hopeful when you start, but sometimes when you get to the middle, you know, you're just... It just seems like you have a lot of of mountain left to climb, you know, you're not quite there yet. 
But of course, you know, the reality of transition can be rather depressing in itself. I mean, if you just go on, on Google News and search for transgender or transsexual, you'll find that there's a lot of articles about transgender people being murdered. And, you know, murderers being tried for killing trans people and hate crimes and discrimination and homophobia and all those things. And, you know, looking at that is, is also scary and depressing. And if you're a trans, transsexual woman and you're interested in dating, or if you're a trans man and you're interested in dating, uh, it can add, you know, some additional difficulties. You want to date someone, you know, if you're a trans woman, you want to date someone who will know you as a woman first, before knowing you as a trans person. But that's difficult, you know, because if if you don't tell them that you're trans, you feel like you're being dishonest, maybe, you know. You have to hide a big part of your life from them. But if you tell people openly that you're trans, then you risk attracting people who come to you because you're trans. You know, fetishists, you know, people who uh, aren't the chicks with dicks and all that stuff and that don't really love you for who you are at, at all. You know, and all those things can can make your your life more difficult. And you know, don't get me wrong, I think the truth is that we transsexuals are some of the most courageous people in the world. You know, we do something that very few people dare to do in order to be happy. But, you know, we don't get a lot of respect for it. You know, there are fortunately people who support us out there. But most of society doesn't even understand why we do what we do. You know, people don't understand when I tell them that I'm a trans woman and that I'm attracted to women, you know, they think that being transsexual is the same thing as being gay and therefore that me transitioning and having a girlfriend doesn't make sense. You know, they don't even understand. And you know, and then there's the people who outright see me as a freak, you know, and only think of transsexuals as like prostitutes and things like that. So, you know, we don't get a lot of respect for all the efforts that we put in this, you know, even though really we're not hurting anyone. You know, we're only seeking to be happier in the end. So I think, you know, when you put all these things together, it's not surprising that, you know, transsexuals are often cited as one of the subgroups of the population with the highest suicide rate, you know. We're subjected to a lot of stress and anxiety, and all of these negative things, you know, can begin to take a toll on our emotional well-being. You know, living in a highly stressful and negative environment can eventually provoke depression. And what does depression mean? You know, depression doesn't just mean being sad one day and getting over it. You know, depression is a, is a persistent state that lasts, you know, up to several weeks and months in which, you know, you, you feel like you have a lack of motivation. You have a lack of interest in doing things that normally would seem fun to you, like watching a good movie. You have a loss of appetite, you know. You can't seem really to enjoy doing anything that would normally be fun. You can be tired, you know, start having low self-esteem, having negative thoughts about yourself, you know, that you're a crappy person. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it, it just seems like when you're depressed, you know, everything seems bad. The whole world seems crappy. You know, everything seems like it's, it's going wrong. And you start, you know, lacking hopes for your own future. You know, I think when people get to that point, when people are just in a state when they're constantly in a state where, where they're unhappy and they can't enjoy anything in life, and it's like that day after day after day, you know, that's when people start thinking about suicide. That's when people basically, you know, start thinking that there's no way out, that this is never going to change, that everything is only going to get more wrong because their life is so difficult. And, you know, it's a some people who are in those situations end up taking their own life. And I think that's that's very sad, you know, and it could happen to you too possibly, you know, if you're starting your transition and, and things are difficult, you could end up in a state of depression. Also, something that I should mention is that depression is not always caused, you know, by stress and anxiety and being in an environment where people reject you and all of those things. There's also other possible causes for it. Personally, I experienced depression, you know, at two important points in my life. I experienced it as a teenager, you know, because I was living um, 
you know, with, with family difficulties and also with the problem of transsexuality and you know, not, not being able to express it really to anyone that I knew because I knew that the other kids at school, you know, would, would make fun of me for being trans, that they wouldn't understand anything. So I felt completely isolated and I started feeling depressed, you know, at that time and feeling like I didn't know how I was ever going to really be happy. But I, I, you know, I kept going and I eventually got out of it. And eventually, you know, when I reached university, I decided to transition. And then, you know, my transition overall went pretty well. You know, I, I think I've been, uh, you know, pretty well treated by life in this area. But I experienced depression again, nevertheless. And I attribute this, you know, to my testosterone blockers. You know, it seems like anti-androgens will affect your brain chemistry and in particular if you're taking high doses of androcure or spironolactone or another anti-androgen and your level of testosterone you know becomes really near to zero that can cause depression to happen you know basically it will interfere with, with your dopamine which I believe is the, is the neurotransmitter that regulates you know pleasure you know enjoyment and you know when when your your dopamine is depleted in your brain, basically, you're in a state where you can't enjoy things anymore. It just doesn't work. So, because because of that, you know, you end up you know naturally steering towards negative emotions because you can't really experience positive emotions. And it's kind of a self-reinforcing thing. So you know, the advice that I have to give you in terms of anti-androgens is you have to be careful. You don't necessarily need to take an extreme dose of anti-androgen, you know, that's fit for people that get, uh, you know, prostate cancer. Because often, um, endocrinologists will prescribe you a level of T-blockers that's fit, you know, for people getting prostate cancer. Because that's what anti-androgens were originally conceived to do. They're conceived to block testosterone completely because testosterone will basically stimulate the growth of prostate cancer. So when someone has prostate cancer, you know, until they can get the tumor removed, they will be prescribed a ton of anti androgens you know, as much as possible to really completely eliminate testosterone and stop the growth of the tumor. But when you're transsexual, that's not your goal. Your goal should probably be not to completely zero out your testosterone, but to get it into a normal female range. Because you need to remember that genetic females do not have zero testosterone. You know, healthy genetic women have some amount of testosterone. And that contributes, you know, to their sex drive, among other things. And also possibly to uh, preventing depression. So that's just something to think about uh, as a potential cause for depression. But of course, you know, I talk about depression and all the things that can cause it, but I think that one of the important things that you should do is try to prevent it. You know, in terms of preventing depression, I mean, there, there's not a lot of advice that I can give you. I think the advice is pretty simple. I would say, you know, make sure not to be isolated. Make sure to have people who support you. You know, as much as possible, try to make local transsexual friends in your area, you know, and, or at least online. You know, try to create an environment of people around you who support you and understand you and are there for you when you need them. You know, you need to have a few friends for you to not feel completely alone when you're going through a hard time in your life, which happens, especially when you're transsexual. You know, maybe you should also, you know, think about doing activities, you know, with, with other people, you know, going out more and all those things. And again, you know, it sounds really simple, sounds really vague, but I think it's important, you know, because when you're depressed, you know, you, you don't really feel like going out, but the more you isolate yourself, the more, you know, the harder it becomes to pull yourself out of it. I would also say that uh, it's important to distance yourself, you know, from your immediate reality. And because sometimes really harsh things will happen to you, like losing your job. And it will seem like it's the end of your life, it's the worst thing that ever happened to you. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, maybe you'll find a job a couple of weeks later. You know, maybe you'll need to go a little bit in debt to survive for those few weeks. But in the end, you know, if you can't find another job again, you know, you know, and even if you had to go a couple of years without a job, you know, maybe you'll survive and you'll be happy in the end, you know. It's not because something hard happens in the present, you know. It's not because you're going through a difficult time that things aren't going to get fixed later. 
And of course, I think in terms of you know helping yourself when you're depressed, it's important to be able to identify depression. Because when, when you're depressed and you're in that persistent state of lack of interest and lack of motivation and lack of positive emotions, you will perhaps not realize that you are depressed. You will feel like you are genuinely sad for very real reasons, you know. But what you don't realize is that when you're depressed, you know, your brain chemistry is altered and that affects the way that you think. And I think that, you know, I've learned to detect when I'm depressed because there's a distinct feeling, you know, like when you start being depressed, I think you don't necessarily feel sad. You just feel like, you know, nothing is interesting. Like, usually you like, you know, watching that TV show, but right now it seems boring. Usually you like, you know, going to that to that bar or to that place or seeing friends, but it seems boring. You don't want to really do anything, you know, everything seems uninteresting. And it, you have a hard time, you know, feeling happy about anything, you know, or being interested in anything. I think that's like one of the initial stages of depression. And then when you're, you're starting to get more depressed, you will probably feel like everything is going wrong, you know? Everything is going wrong with your life, but everything is going wrong with the world. You know, everybody is mean. And you know, the world is at war. And the economy is collapsing. You know, and the president is, is driving this country to, to the ground, you know? And, you know, the pollution is going to kill all the animals on this planet, melt the ice caps, you know? It seems like everything is going wrong when you're depressed sometimes and you know I think when you start feeling like the whole world around you is going wrong perhaps you should re-examine that and realize that it's because there's something wrong inside of you you know there's something wrong with the way you're perceiving the world because when you're depressed and your brain chemistry is altered you turn you, you tend to perceive everything you know through like a negative lens you know through like really dark classes and everything seems bad but that is not an objective perception of the world. And you know, if you've never been depressed before, perhaps that, that's an idea that sounds weird to you because you're, you're kind of used to thinking that you're always perceiving the world rationally. But it's not true, you know? When you're in, in a depressive state, it affects the way that you think. It affects the way that you perceive everything. And it's important to be able to identify when you're in that situation so that you can look for a cause, you know, for your depression and seek help and treatment. I think it's important to realize when you're depressed, you know, that you know, perhaps you should start by getting some rest if you feel extremely tired. And you should call some friends, you know, call someone, someone who will help you. And, you know, perhaps seek treatment. If your depression keeps persisting for weeks and weeks, you know, maybe you should think about decreasing your dosage of antiandrogens for one to something slightly lower. Maybe you should think of seeing a doctor, you know, to find antidepressants if you're extremely depressed and you can't seem to get out of it. And of course, I would like to add that, you know, you should, you should never think of suicide as an option. You should never give up, you know, because a lot of people, you know, have tried committing suicide and, and failed and now live very happy lives, you know, and they're living proof that, you know, even if you are very depressed at some point in your life and you think about suicide, it doesn't mean that it's the right answer. You know, I, I... There's a girl on the internet once that wanted to commit suicide and she told me she was about to kill herself. And she did that thing, you know, swallowing a bunch of pills to try and kill herself. And basically I called the police on her. And they came to her house and she'd already, you know, swallowed all those pills. And, you know, they, they pumped her stomach and everything. And, you know, I don't know if for sure if she would have died if I hadn't done anything. Because, to be honest, it's a very inefficient way to kill yourself. But, you know, she credits me with having saved her life now. And she says that she's very happy. You know, and she lives a very happy life. And that she's very thankful that she didn't die. You know? And, I mean, you should realize that there's always people out there who are in a worse situation than you who get out of it, you know? Even if your life is extremely difficult, usually there's always a way out. You know, if you keep persisting and you keep being courageous, you're going to succeed. If you're transsexual and you lose everything, you lose your family and your friends, you know, you need to remember that your family might come around someday and you'll make new friends and you'll get a new job. And even if you think, you know, that you're transsexual and you're really unpassable, 
you need to realize a lot of transsexuals who think that they're unpassable end up passing very well. I myself, when I started, you know, I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, you know, I was a very masculine guy and that I could never pass as a girl. You know, there, there was no way this was going to work. But I gave it a try anyways and I think nowadays I passed nearly 100%, you know. So I think I'm doing pretty well for myself. So, you know, I'm an example of someone who wasn't quite sure at all it was going to work out and who made it. And there's other example of people who, you know, had much harsher, much more difficult transitions than mine and who still made it. So I think it's important, you know, to to maintain your courage and to realize, you know, it's not because things are hard now, it's not because things seem hard very often that they're going to be hard all the time. You know, just make sure to have people to support you and keep going and at some point you will reach your goal if you keep trying. So that's all I have to say for today people. I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, if you have anything else you'd like to add, I encourage you to make a video response. And uh, okay, that's it for today people. Bye bye.